Hey everybody! This little video is showing you guys some jewelry that I've made over the past couple months. I've been on kind of a little jewelry making spree lately. So I've got a little bit of this and a little bit of that to show you. And none of this was made using particularly involved techniques. I don't have any metal working pieces or anything that would require special equipment or skills. This, these are things you can make with equipment from a craft store or with supplies you can very easily find online. So there, there's nothing that you can't replicate on your own if you like it. So this is very basic jewelry making. And this first thing that I'm holding up is a pendant which I made at the Creating Keepsake Convention and it's using a pendant tray, a glass tile, and an image behind it. And this is, the company is called Craft Fantastic. And I've already shown this in my Creating Keepsake video, but I've made more pieces with the supplies I bought and using the techniques I learned. So this is one of the pieces I made there at the convention. And then I have this one, which is my little shabby chic roses with the bird. I made that at the convention. And then I have this little um, little heart, tiny little dainty heart. I made that at the convention. And then after I came home I made some more pieces. I made this little Halloween little black cat and a jack-o-lantern. And then I made a little pendant from an art painting, a pre-Raphaelite art painting by Waterhouse. And I'll talk some more about this. And then I also made one with a flower fairy. I think it's Cicely Mary Barker's Flower Fairies. And this is my this is a very special fairy to me. I have this fairy tattooed on my body, so this is a very special fairy for me and I've always wanted to make a piece of jewelry with it. And I also made some bracelets. And these were little kits from Craft Fantastic. This one, the shabby chic pinks, and it's flowers and little birds. And I made this one because I have a sweater, the shade of pink. And I have another sweater, this kind of darker shade of pink, that I like to wear when the weather is cooler. So I thought I'd make a bracelet with those colors in it because I really don't have any jewelry to go with them. And then I made one with these little birds which I just like the fall colors. I thought these are good colors to go with fall clothes and it's just a nice pretty little pictures of birds. And then I made a third one with more Waterhouse Pre-Raphaelite ladies. And these are just women from various Waterhouse paintings. And the Waterhouse lady bracelet, the flower fairy pendant and the waterhouse lady pendant these were all printed out on an inkjet printer onto basic cheap white printer paper which when we took the class the instructor from craft fantastic told us go ahead and experiment with your printers they recommend that you use ink that you use a laser printer to print out things to use with their system of adhesive and glass but they said you know different printers work differently you may get a good enough printout and they encouraged us to just try because the worst that happens is you have to soak it in water and scrape the paper off the back and use the glass over again so I printed I've got this little set of image files from an Etsy vendor I bought it with the intention of using it to make soldered glass art, but I thought, you know, I'll try it with this. And I printed, I went ahead and printed it out, and it came out great. So now I have myself a little pre-Raphaelite lady bracelet. So those were all used making Craft Fantastic with the Craft Fantastic, and I'm going to put a link to their website because that's a really neat product. It's really simple, and it's not particularly expensive, and you can custom make whatever you want. And then I also made. Just a little Halloween bracelet for fun. I had some leftover beads from a um, charm swap I did. And these are really cool beads. They're almost kind of rubberized. They came from Joann's. They're just really bright and fun. And all I did was string them on some beading wire using a crimp bead to attach them to a clasp and a ring. So this was just something fun to wear on Halloween. And then also using that same technique with the the beading wire 
and the crimp beads. I made myself a necklace out of freshwater pearls. And it is a beautiful color of kind of a seafoam bluish green. This actually came from Hobby Lobby. And believe it or not, the, the pearls came, and they are pearls, came from Hobby Lobby. And what happened was I used some in a charm swap. And I went back and got some more when they were on sale. I bought them on sale when that particular line of, of jewelry components was on sale. It took about three strings to make this necklace. And the beads were $10 a string. But I did get them on sale half price. So it wasn't that bad. But I didn't have enough of them to make it long enough to be a comfortable length. And when I went back to Hobby Lobby, they didn't have any more. So what I did was the necklace itself will fit me as a choker. But I made an extender. And to make the extender, all I did was took a little piece of chain and added a hook to it and added a second little loop to it for this little T-bar and loop clasp. And the clasps are base metal. They're not sterling. This was really inexpensive to make and it was a way to have these beautiful bluish green freshwater pearls to have for a necklace. So, and I think if I were to twist it around three times, I could wear it as a bracelet. So this is a really neat one that I like a lot. And then back to Hobby Lobby. These three pieces I'm going to show next were just used making components and attaching them together. The line is called Metal Gallery. And all I did was buy chains and pendants and attach them together. And this is just a, a kind of a, a smoky gray crystal on a, a pendant. And then I put a chain, on, put it on a chain. And all I did was I opened up the links with pliers, hooked them on to the, the loop. And it's got a little clasp on it. My neck is a little big because <laughs> everything about me is a little big. So I ended up having to use two chains on each of these necklaces I'm going to show you. I didn't use all of the two chains, so I used like a chain and a half or a chain and a third, but I couldn't get by with just one chain. So that's how that one works with it kind of hanging in the middle. I waited until Metal Gallery products were half price so that I wouldn't be spending as much. And then this one I've already worn in a video. And it's a neat heart pendant with black kind of caviar beads set inside it. And it's this kind of black into metal, almost a hematite look. And it's just got a neat chain effect. And this part here, this, this loop and the heart was the pendant, and then I attached the chain. And again, I had to get two chains. The, the <laughs> sorry about that, the links. I had to just make it the right length. The links aren't soldered together, so I was able to just open them with my pliers and add and, add and take away as much as I needed. As long as they're not soldered, you can make it as long or short as you need, just by using your needle nose pliers. And then the last piece I'm going to show is my absolute favorite that I've made. And this one, I'm going to put it back against this pillow to get a better look. It is kind of a smoky, heart-shaped crystal with this loop that has the rhinestone crystals. Now this was all one piece and then I put the chain on. What I did was I just opened the loops with my pliers, slipped it around this ring with the, the rhinestones and closed it on both sides. And again, it's got a, a clasp to put it on and off. I really like this one. This is a, This one looks neat on and it's just got a nice weight and feel to it. It looks a lot more it looks a lot more, um, what's the word I want to use? High end than what it is. I mean, the, the pendant was $5.99 before, I think before it was on sale, and the chains were probably a few dollars each. So this is maybe a $12 at most piece, and it looks like something you might find in a department store. It's obviously costume jewelry, but it doesn't look like really cheap costume jewelry. So that is it. And all of this stuff, like I said, was made using basic techniques, basic tools, basic supplies. So if anyone has any questions on how I did some of this or where I got the supplies, feel free to let me know. And I'm going to put the link for Craft Fantastic there in the description box. 
So I will see you guys later. Bye.